Okay, so this is vocabulary words for enriched English for the Odyssey. So you should have your notes out in front of you, which should look like this. And what you're going to do is for each slide, you're going to fill in the word. You're going to fill in the denotation, which is the dictionary definition for the word. You're going to fill in a connotation, which is whatever the word makes you think of that will help you remember the word. So don't write down something nonsense. Um, write down the part of speech, a synonym, and then, this is important, the sentence with context clues that needs to be your own sentence, not the one from the presentation. Okay, so in order to get credit, you have to have your own sentence with context clues written down in those boxes. Okay, so the first word is Odyssey, which is appropriate since we're talking about the story called the Odyssey, and it is a noun. It's a long series of wanderings and adventures filled with hardships. It is a journey or a quest. So an example sentence. The story told about a young man's Odyssey through the vast Siberian wilderness. So the context clues here would be the fact that he's going through the vast Siberian wilderness, indicating that it is long and far and wide, and it takes him a while to get through, and it's not an easy journey. Please pause as necessary. I'm going to go kind of quickly through these in the video, but pause and take notes and fill in your sentences as we go. Second word is plunder which is on page 981 of your lit book, and it is a verb. It means to take goods by force, to loot. So an example sentence. Great treasure was gathered in these plundering expeditions. So they would travel around and they would take treasure that did not belong to them on the journey. And this happens frequently in the Odyssey. Mutinous is the third word on page 983 of your textbook. It is an adjective, and as you can see here, the cats are fighting. Eh, they could sort of be rebellious. Rebellious is the definition. The mutinous or rebellious sailors still refuse to obey any commands. If they're refusing to obey commands, that means that they're being rebellious. Formidable is the next word. It's on page 983, and it's an adjective. It means inspiring awe, admiration, wonder, fear, or dread. So the tracker jackers and their venom were formidable obstacles in the Hunger Games. An example sentence also about the Hunger Games. Katniss Everdeen was considered a formidable opponent in the Hunger Games series. She gained the respect of her peers with her bow and arrow skills. Even though she was from District 12, she defied the odds and impressed everyone. Next word is Lee, which is on page 984. It's a noun. It is an area sheltered from the wind. So this here would be an example of a lee. It's an area sheltered from the wind. So an example sentence, some shelter from the strong spring current can be obtained from the lee of the mountain. Looks beautiful. I wouldn't mind going there right now. Prodigious. This is on page 986. It's another adjective. And prodigious means enormous. So an example sentence, dinosaurs were prodigious or enormous beasts compared to the animals that roam the earth today. Ginormous. Okay, whim is the next word on page 989, and it's a noun. A whim is a sudden thought or wish to do something. So a sentence, whether they participated or not, seems to have been on the basis of their own personal whim. If they felt like doing it, then they just did it. Okay, dispatch is on page 990, and it's a verb. Dispatch means to complete quickly, to send away with speed, or to kill. So there are different definitions for this verb. An example sentence, the hunters dispatched the bird as it tried to fly away. 
and you would also make a connection with dispatchers if you call 911. They're called dispatchers because after they receive the 911 call, then they dispatch the police or the firefighters or both, whoever is appropriate, for the emergency. DIN is on page 990 and it's a noun. A DIN is a loud, continuous noise and uproar. An example sentence. Amid a deafening din, several busloads of police reinforcements arrived. So you've got a din explosion. That's an explosion going on behind the car here. This girl is covering her ears because there is obviously an annoying din. And this monkey is screeching, creating a din. Sage is on page 993, it's actually both an adjective and a noun. So as an adjective, sage means wise. As a noun, sage is a wise person. So an example, whenever I can't make a decision, I ask my mother because she is full of sage advice. That's using it as an adjective. Or you can say, my mother is such a sage. She is so full of impressive advice. So here are just some pictures on the bottom for you. How do I put this? You will never sleep in again, a very wise baby. At first I was like, but then I was like, huh. That's just a funny one. And you mean to tell me spoons don't actually sound like airplanes? That baby would not be considered a sage. Okay, pectoral is on page 994. It's an adjective. Pectoral means located in or on the chest. An example, the prime function of the pectoral muscles is to draw the arms across the chest. And here in this picture, you can see the pectoral muscles are red. So when you do bench press, you're working on your pectorals. Ardor is a noun. It's on page 1007 of your textbook. It means passion or enthusiasm. So ardor is something that is a noun. It's an idea noun, though. You can't really hold it in your hands. So Scrat from Ice Age is full of an ardor for his acorn. The sentence says she is a person with a great ardor for breast cancer awareness. That's what her passion is. And here you have volleyball player, I forget her name, I don't know if it's Misty May Trainer or whatever her partner's name is, but they've been in um, the Olympic Games and they're a really good um, partnership. Anyway, she has ardor for volleyball. And then you have Andrea and Andrew Agassi over here who has an ardor for playing tennis. A lot of times you will see athletes who have a great ardor for their sport. Okay, maelstrom on page 1009 is a noun. A maelstrom is a large, violent whirlpool. There's a maelstrom named Charybdis in the epic poem The Odyssey. The summer wind came early and the whole shore became a maelstrom in moments. Contrive is a verb. It's on page 1012. To contrive means to think up or to devise. Example sentence. At first it seemed to be impossible, but I soon devised a plan or contrived a plan. So you can see this guy down here. He's looking pretty evil. He's contriving some terrible plan to take over the world. Dissemble is on page 1022, and it's a verb. To, to dissemble means to conceal under a false appearance, to disguise. So a sentence. Bank robbers try to dissemble or disguise their identities from the police when they wear ski masks and gloves. So if somebody says, dissemble no longer, that means you are supposed to reveal who you are. Incredulity is on page 1024, and it's a noun. Incredulity is an inability to believe. 
So an example sentence, they have expressed incredulity at our governor's position on the passing of the bill. In other words, they just could not believe the governor's position on passing the bill. So obviously he was either for it or against it and they were the opposite. And then you might be full of incredulity when you look at this picture and see that there are wild cats stroking the head of a deer. Haughty is on page 1029 and it's an adjective. Haughty means arrogant or conceited. Helen could be a real prima donna and very haughty at times, but she was still very much loved. And these people are all famous actors um, and figures in Hollywood who are known for being haughty. Then you have impudence, which is a noun on page 1030. It's the quality of being shamelessly bold or disrespectful. Example sentence. Criminals who are trying to get out of jail time dare not backtalk or show any impudence to the judge. If you are impudent to the judge, meaning disrespectful, you better just forget about it. And these boys here are being impudent because not only did they break this guy's shop window, but then they go to him and they ask for their brick back. That's very disrespectful. Revelry is a noun. It's on page 1039, and it means boisterous or unruly festivity. For those who need their beauty sleep, a designated quiet camping area will offer a peaceful haven away from the night's revelry. So on New Year's Eve, there's lots of revelry going on. On college campuses, it is frequent to find revelry. And then we have abyss, which is on page 1046, and it's a noun. An abyss is the ocean depth, a deep cavity. And these are pictures. This is actually from a movie called Abyss, but these are examples of an abyss. In order to find the remains of the boat, several men traveled into the ocean's abyss. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, Marlin and Dory travel into the ocean's abyss to look for the mask that has the address on it where Nemo was taken. And that's it. So please remember that the sentences on the worksheet need to be your own sentences, not the ones from the presentation. And make sure that you have everything filled in. If you need to go back and listen to it a second time, please do so.